Hi everybody, this is a tutorial on how to use Flash CS5 to make a animated symbol. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document, File New. And then I'm going to choose ActionScript 3.0 from the options. And here is my empty stage. So, I'm going to import an image as a background. I'm going to go to File, Import. Then I'm going to go Import to Stage. So, here's a picture that I've imported from my desktop of a garden. I'm going to go ahead and click on the image with my black arrow. I can move the image around if necessary. I'm just going to go ahead and transform it by using the transform tool and make it big enough to fit the entire canvas. So I'm just using the transform tool and stretching this thing out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to import an image that will serve as my symbol. So before I do that, before I do that I'm going to label my background layer as background and I'm going to lock it just to ensure I don't mess it up. Then I'm going to go to insert new symbol and I'm going to call this butterfly because I'm going to put a butterfly in here and for the type I'm going to choose graphic and then I'm going to press OK. And Now you'll notice I'm in a new window. I've left my scene and I'm now editing the butterfly symbol. There's nothing in here yet, so I'm going to import the image. File import, import to stage, and I'm going to find my picture. Now here's this butterfly. Looks good. So it's a little too big, so I'm going to zoom out by clicking in the top right so I can see a little bit more of my stage and how big this butterfly is on the stage. Now this is looking good. Now one thing when I have an image that has a white background is I like to change the color of my background itself so that I can see the border of the image. So I'm going to click here in the gray space for a second and then take a look at properties. So I'm going to click away, click in the gray space, and then take a look at properties. And now it'll show me the properties for the entire document. And there's a little option here to change the color of the stage. So I'm just going to change it to like a dark gray. Now I can definitely see the border of my image. And this is an image that I got off of Wikimedia. So I'm going to click on this image again, and one thing I want to do is get rid of this white background. So to do that really quickly, I can go to Modify, Bitmap, Trace Bitmap, choose some settings. 105 is just a general one that I like to use. It always works. And then I'll just press OK. So 100 for color threshold, 5 for minimum area. It traces the bitmap. And what's cool is it makes it look a little cartoony, but what I like best is that all that white is now just one selectable region. So if I click away and then click back on the photo, I can quickly click on all the white, and then I can just press delete. And now all the white's gone. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this butterfly in another one of the keyframes. So I'm going to click in keyframe number two in my timeline. I'm going to right click and choose insert keyframe. So now there's two versions of the butterfly. So now that I've got the two keyframes, if I go back and forth between the two, well, there's not much of a change because they're exactly alike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the second one by clicking on the second keyframe and I'm going to transform it. Now I have the transform tool selected right now, but if I didn't or if you don't, you could just click on the transform tool and you'll see the transform controls. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it from the left and from the right. I'm going to keep that midpoint, you'll see this little white midpoint, I'm going to keep that in the center. So now I have a big butterfly on frame one and a thinner butterfly on frame two. And the cool thing about that is that it gives the effect that this butterfly is flapping its wings. So now my symbol is actually done. So if I go back to scene one now, which just has a simple background, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this new layer butterfly. And in this new layer, I'm going to insert the symbol that I just created. Now that symbol that I just created lives in my library. Anytime you make a new symbol, it pops into your library. So there it is, butterfly. So I'm going to drag the butterfly onto my stage. 
and it's a little too big, so I'm going to grab the transform tool, which is again the third tool down, and I'll scroll up to find the transform, but um, transform edge, and I'll hold shift, that way it'll transform a proportion, and I'll shrink this butterfly. Let me readjust my stage here. Now I want to make this butterfly move in time, so I want to create some more keyframes. If we click on the stage, we'll see that right now we're at 24 frames per second. So if I wanted my animation to last a couple seconds, then I'd want to have more than 24 frames. So why don't we go ahead and go all the way to 48. We can go to 50. We don't have to be exactly on the number, but 50 will be good. And I'm going to right click on there, and I'm going to choose Insert Frame. Now what that does does that mean that this butterfly now exists for 50 frames? And you see what's cool is it's already starting to flap its wings, which is awesome. But the background isn't long enough. So I'm going to click on the background layer, click on the same frame 50, and also right click and choose insert frame. So now the background is also active for 50 frames, and so is the butterfly. So now it's time to make this butterfly move. So I'm going to click back on frame 1 for the butterfly, and I'm going to move it actually outside of my canvas. Because so I want it to fly in and then fly out of frame. So in frame 1, it's going to be outside of the frame. And now, if I want to create some motion, what I can do is I can click on the butterfly, I can grab my selection tool just to make sure I don't modify its shape by mistake. So the selection tool is the first tool. And then, as I have the symbol selected, I'm going to right-click on the timeline and choose Create Motion Tween. Now, if I click on any frame, for example, frame 15, and you'll notice I have the red playhead over frame 15, so that means I know I'm clicking there. If I drag my butterfly, you'll see this little line. This is the motion that's being created between frame 1 and frame 15. Well, then now I can click on frame 30, move the butterfly somewhere else and then I can click on frame 50 and move the butterfly out of frame and now when I press enter the butterfly flaps across the screen now it's still flapping a little fast so you know what I'll change the frame rate again I'm clicking with my selection tool in the empty space around my stage and I'm gonna go to where it says frames per second and I want it to play a little slower. Let's try 10, 10 frames or something per second. Then it'll play slower. So now I can click back on my first frame, press enter. And now the butterfly is going to slowly fly across the screen, which is awesome. Now if I want to modify the path, I can change its course. It's a little hard to see right now because this garden is so vivid. So I'm actually going to turn off the visibility on the garden layer and then I'll see the path that the butterfly exists on. And if this gray color that I have for my background is a little too hard to see, well then I can change that too. I can click again on the gray space that controls the stage color, so I'll change it to white. Ah, it's a lot easier now to see the points. Now to move these points, I can use the white arrow, which is the sub-selection tool. And I can literally move the points. Now these points that I'm moving are the points that I added on my timeline. So you'll notice I've got one, two, three, four points on my timeline, and I've got one, two, three, and four points on the path of the butterfly. These other points, they don't really move. I just can move the really big points. I've got four of them. If I wanted it to curve, I could go into the pen tool and choose the Convert Anchor Point Pen Tool. Now you can't see it because of the way my screen is capturing, but just hold down on the Pen Tool and choose the last option. It looks like a little triangle. And then with this little triangle, you can click on the point, and when you click on it, it'll turn it into a Bezier curve. So if I click and drag as I touch one of those points, I'll now have a curve. So now I have a smooth curve occurring. So let's see what that looks like and I press enter. It's a lot smoother now. And let's put it all together. Let's put that background on. 
And now when I press enter, there's that butterfly just flapping its wings across the garden. And now to test this, I can go to Control Test Movie. Now before you do Control Test Movie, you'll have to save it. So I'll save my file really quick by going to File and clicking on Save As and saving it somewhere on, in my computer, on my desktop, anywhere where you'll find it easily. I'll call this Butterfly. You'll notice the file extension is FLA, which means it's a flash document. It's going to contain all the information that you've been working on. And I'm going to save it. And once I save it, I can go to Control Test Movie, click on Test, and I'll see my movie. And the movie will repeat, because that's just the way Flash works. It will repeat on and on and on. Later on, we'll discover how to s control the movies and stop them, and even add a button. But I hope that explains how to create an animated symbol. Come back for more tutorials. Thanks a lot.